In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one Amen. On this great Friday, we sing together beautiful hymns, and they're very moving, and especially one of them, when we all pray and say, Remember me, O Lord, when you come into your kingdom. We're all moved by this um, hymn and tune, but do we actually stop and think, what does it mean? Do we actually stop and think and imagine ourselves actually saying it to our Lord Jesus Christ? Remember me, O Lord, when you come into your kingdom. Why wouldn't he not remember me? You know, I'm, I'm a priest. I serve him at the altar. And I do all the sacraments. Why would he not remember me? I'm a servant in the church. I'm very famous. Everyone knows me. Why would he not remember me? I'm a Christian. And I do my usual prayers my usual fasting, why would not remember me? And this is a very important question because we cannot take it for granted that we will be remembered before God. We cannot assume that this is automatic because I'm in the church. And that's why our Lord Jesus Christ himself that. He said, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, not everyone who prays, not everyone who comes to church. He says, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord. This is what we just said. You know, I'm a servant, I'm a priest, I'm a deacon, I'm doing all this great stuff. Many will say to me in that day, judgment day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? What more do we need? Someone doing miracles. That's not enough for our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me. This is very scary. I never knew you. What about all the things that I did? What about all these services that I did? What about all these prayers that I did? I never knew you. And that's why it's very important for us to actually, when we come to church, to really come to try and increase our love for Christ, not to come and do a practice. You know, we see, we hear during the whole Pascha week, the scribes and Pharisees doing everything right by the book. They knew the scriptures inside out. They made sure they're not defiled. They made sure that them, all the, you know, the cleaning, all the cleansing, everything they have to do right. They're following everything. Even the tithe, they used to give the tithe of everything. But our Lord Jesus Christ was not happy with them. And he says many times, why to you? Why? It's because of this. It's because of this verse. When we say, remember me, O Lord, when you come into your kingdom, we need to beg God and imagine that we're standing in front of him and saying, please, I beg you, remember me. You need to remember me. You need to remember me. And he, uh, there was a very... Um, Quite scary, actually, homily by St. Severus during the week on Wednesday. And this is what he says. He says, he's talking about Judgment Day. He says, who can intercede for the sinners in that day? Talk about Judgment Day. Who can intercede for the sinners in that day? When all the angels, cherubim and seraphim, keep quiet and neither the righteous nor the saints can intercede for mankind. The whole creation will be silent and the whole world will be made under the divine judgment. Very scary. Very scary. Because sometimes we take God's love for granted. We take his love for granted and assume any time, no problems, I'll have a chance. Some even now preach heresy saying that after you die, there is a chance. There's no chances after we die. The door is shut. There's no chances. This is a heresy that people are teaching and saying, God is merciful, God is kind, he will give you chances. No, after death, there's no chances. This is very clear from our teaching. And we see when we say, remember me, O Lord, when you come into your kingdom, God will say, I remember you if I can see my image and likeness in you. Because he said, he will tell me, I have created you in my image and likeness. Who are you? Where are you from? You don't look familiar. 
I cannot see my image and likeness in you. I've created you, but now you look different. And this is what happens when we live our life in sin. Our image and likeness becomes distorted. God created us. When you got baptized, we got chrismated. We become a child of God. And we wear white to signify our purity. When we sin, we distort the image. We defile that white garment that we're wearing. That's why when we come in front of God on Judgment Day, He has to see that. He has to reconcile that image and likeness. Otherwise, He'll say, I don't know you. Where are you from? Depart from me. And these are all very scary words. And this is, our Lord Jesus Christ said it a number of times in different Gospels. And as well, we know the famous parable of the ten versions. The same thing. You know, they're all the same, the versions, but the other ones, the foolish ones, were not, were not ready. And what happened? The door was shut. And they kept knocking, Lord, Lord, open to us. And he said, I don't know you. I don't know you. They said, open to us. They assumed the door will be open. They always have chances. But the time when the door will be closed and there will be more chances. And this is very important for us to understand this. To be prepared to get ready for this. Because the devil will trick us into living a lazy life. Where we always take God for granted. How many times we say, I don't have to go to church today. I can go next week. It's okay if I miss the liturgy. This one. I can go next week. It's okay if I don't repent now. I can repent next week or next month. We always give ourselves excuses. And we assume that the door will always be open for us. But as we can see, we don't know when the end is going to be. We don't know when our end is going to be. We need to be prepared all the time. Not just because of fear, but because of our love for God. When you love someone, you want to be ready to be with them any time. Whenever they ask to be with them, you have to be ready. You have to be ready to meet them at any time. This is out of love. When we... Uh, one, one of the other homily as well that we read during the week on Wednesday was a beautiful one by Saint Chinu that Ashmad read. And he said this. He says, Till when will you be lazy, you man? I urge you, shed tears for your soul as long as your tears are acceptable. He was saying that the people who will shed their tears here on earth will rejoice and be happy in heaven. But those who rejoice here and not worry about the tears of repentance, they will suffer at the end. And this is what he said. He said, moreover, if you have done deeds requiring repentance with tears, weep for your soul by yourself. For the saints are weeping with you for the salvation of your soul. Blessed is he who sheds tears for his soul here on earth, as he will avoid the everlasting weeping and gnashing of teeth. And he will rejoice a heavenly joy. Again, he's trying to wake us up and saying, this is a time. This is a time when the tears are acceptable. Because there will come times where tears are not going to be acceptable. As we said, when the door is shut, no matter, there's no more repentance. There's no chances anymore. Our tears are not acceptable anymore because the doors are shut. And this is very important. As Saint Shinoda is telling us here that we need to stop being lazy. And whenever we, we, whenever we sin, we need to repent while the tears are acceptable because the past we cannot change. And the future we're not in control of. This is the only moment that we can control. And that's why the acceptable time is now. Today is the time. Today is the acceptable time. If you hear his voice, today do not harden your heart. Today is the day to offer that. And today is the day to offer that because our Lord Jesus Christ, if that was the end of it, then our life will be miserable. But today, he said, I'm giving you another chance. We were all destined to death. We we're all destined to death. But he said, because I love you, I'm going to give you another chance. You fell the first time. And corruption entered the world. I have to come down myself and save you. So I can restore that back the image. Because through the cross, what happened? Our Lord Jesus Christ restored the image to us. We say that in some of the prayers. He restored our likeness. He restored back Adam to his original state before the fall. 
through the cross. And that's why today is a very special day because today this is our second chance. How many in life do we get second chances? Sometimes, or most of the times, people don't give us second chances. If we actually wrong them, that's the end of the relationship. That's the end of the trust. Not many people are willing to give us a second chance. But God, today he said, I'm going to open paradise for you again. I'm going to allow you to come in. I'm going to allow you to have a second chance. It's a beautiful day, a beautiful celebration. When we look at the cross, it's very sorrowful for the pains that he's going through. And we cry during the Passion Week, especially on Good Friday, when you remember the pain and suffering of Christ. But Christ is telling us, do not weep for me, as he told the women. Do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves. And this is what he's saying. Do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves. Because this is the tears of repentance that he wants. He said, today, I'm doing the hard work for you. Today, our Lord Jesus Christ did the hard work for us. He went through all this pain and suffering so he can give us a second chance. So he can open for us the doors of paradise. So when you come and saying, remember me, O Lord, he said, today you will be with me in paradise. And that's why the right-hand thief was deserving of this saying by Lord Jesus Christ. Because, as we say in the litanies, and we say the Mass, what did you see? What did you see? What did you observe? That you confess that this is God while he was on the cross, on the cross like a criminal dying, crucified. What did he see for you to believe that? This is the faith that he had. If I ask myself first, what do I see? Every day I see the body and blood of Christ on the altar. I carry it. I carry him on my hand. Every time we see the glory of God during the liturgy, every time I partake of the body and blood of Christ, and we still don't believe. Every time I practice a sacrament, every time I remember that my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, all these things, and sometimes we lapse in our, in our faith, in our, dream, in our belief. But he, the mass, the right-hand thief, he did not see any of these things, but he still had strong faith and belief. That's why he was deserving to be with our Lord Jesus Christ in paradise. And today is our chance as well. Today, our Lord Jesus Christ opened the doors of paradise. So when we come and tell him, God, remember me. When I come into your kingdom, I need to look like him. I need to be in his image and likeness so he can recognize me. So he can tell me today you'll be with me in paradise. So instead of hearing the words where he says, depart from me, I don't know you, where you're from. I want to hear a beautiful saying. I want to hear a beautiful saying. Well done, good and faithful servant. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your master. How beautiful is that? This is what we're aiming to hear. We don't want to, God forbid, to hear the other ones. The door is shut and go away, I don't know you. But I want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. That comes with spiritual struggle. That comes with continuous repentance. That comes with continuous abiding in the Lord through the sacraments in the church. And this is a beautiful day today where God is giving us this opportunity. Are we going to take it or are we going to leave it like we do many years? Make this year a different one. Recognize the importance of it and say today, Lord, I'm going to take that chance. I'm going to take that chance and renew my relationship with you so I can hear that beautiful voice saying, enter into, today will be in paradise, or well done, good and faithful servant. Glory be to God for everyone.